Just give it a few seconds, guys, just to catch up. The live stream is going. There we go. Just give it a few seconds, guys, just to catch up. Bit of a up. lag. Let me turn that down. There we go. Right. Bam, bam, bam. I just let a few people join in. If there are any. Um, I know people jump in as and when they can. Good evening, guys. Welcome to the Live and Undrugged episode 30, um, which is a momentous occasion. Um, thanks, as always, to um, my sponsors at No Mean City Clothing and Armour Scaffolding um, and James Jeffries. Uh, all your um, help is really appreciated um, with these uh, live streams. I'm just going to give it a, a couple of more minutes for people to catch up and for it to get shared on their relevant pages. Um, See, I thought your uh, undrugged thing was a typo. No. Oh, I get it now. No, I'm on it, I'm on it now. Yeah. I get it now. I was I was an addict for years, mate, and I've, I've just turned seven months, cl uh, seven years clean, sorry, and um, it was just live and undrugged, just seemed to fit. It used to be Shed X because I oh, do yeah, it. No, oh, it's good now. It makes proper sense. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, man. But, yeah. Seven years clean, um, mate. Tell me how the fuck you done that. It's um, it's been hard, mate. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. It's been difficult, but. You know, I've, I've, I've got a loving family behind me. I've got married in sobriety and, you know, I've, I've yeah, built yeah. my life up in sobriety. I've built the studio up and, you know. That's it. You just need something to do, don't you? I'm still trying to find something to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. Um, I'm just going to turn this on for a little while. Um, you know, we. Uh, it's, it's something to put your um, your mind into. I wasn't very confident. I'd lost all my confidence over the years. And uh, a friend of mine's a, a hostage negotiator. And um, he said, why don't we, you know, do something together? So we, we, we did one that I planned to do in my shed. We'd both been turn, turned down for TEDx. We started doing the lives and it's just, it took off. You know, I've done over 40, 30 of these. This is number 30 of these. Um, right. you know, I've shared my story with a few other people and it's just, you know, just got there yeah, since yeah. October. Yeah. Have you seen the things on, on BBC Sounds, what they're doing? No, I haven't. Looking for about five people, I think it is, to fund, to do podcasts. Oh, nice. I might have a look into that then. Definitely have a look into that, mate. It'd be proper funded, isn't it? And they train you in all sorts of shit. Well, I, I might have a go at it myself. I get a little bit of funding, you know. Like I said, I've got a, a few um, yeah. few people in. Um, I have someone that pays um, for me to have Zoom um, on a monthly basis. They made a, yeah. a pledge to pay for it, um, so I can carry on doing this really, because um, I absolutely love it. It's given me so much confidence of a. Yeah, the past yeah, yeah. year, like I lost all my confidence, and I've interviewed some absolute belters, and it's just, it's it's yeah, really yeah. helped me come across. Oh, that's true, right. man. That's good, yeah. I know all about the confidence shit, mate. Uh, there you go. Tag you in it, and then I'll tag. Jay Jengba and I'll tag Julie Major and then there we go so that should be sharing onto your page now that should, yeah that's on your page now um, and then there we go 
up and running. Hi, Julie. Um, hi, Joanna. My wife is in here. Uh, hi, Alicia, Poppy Crosby, um, and two other people whom I can't see at the minute. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, tonight, I'm speaking to uh, ex-criminal um, John Crilly, um, and he's going to be talking about his, his life um, and a bit about joint enterprise that we spoke about uh, with Julie Major uh, last week um, and a bit about, uh, at the end, uh, about him being part of taking down Usman Khan on, um, on the London Bridge. Uh, hi, uh, John. Thanks for coming on, mate. Um, it's great yeah, to finally man. get you on. Um, yeah, yeah like, here, mate. cheers, mate. Cheers. It's, 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 it's a real pleasure to have you. Um, let's go back to the start, if, if we can, uh, back to your childhood and, and, and um, you know, how, you know, you uh, ended up in, into crime. And... Yeah, um, well, um, as, a, as a young kid, I was um, brought up on, obviously, a council estate in Manchester, Arthur A, big up Arthur A. Um, got a great dog's home in Arthur A. But, um, yeah, I was born in... Um, Outside toilet, if you believe it. Um, Mum thought she was having a shit and out I popped. So uh, that was my beginning. Um, but no, I was, I had a happy childhood up till I was in my late teens. I was a spoiled little brat, I guess, as far as to say. Um, in primary school, I was an altar boy in church. I was a proper good kid. Uh, I started getting in trouble when I got expelled from school, about 13, just hanging about the streets with nothing to do. Started seeing all the kids pinching cars and stuff, and it seemed very, really exciting, and uh, something I wanted to do. So, yeah, I just started tagging along with them, learned how to pinch cars, and that's all I did for a few years. So I was about 18, I had my first son, and I, I think it was at a bit of a crossroads. I was working every day with my dad labouring. I've come home from work one day and um, dogs to the pub for my wages, got dragged out of the pub, told to go home. Uh, my mum had been um, killed, stood at the traffic lights that morning. Um, so obviously that that destroyed me. So pretty, pretty blunt. Um, I went to the nearest drug addict I knew for an injection. But it was an amphetamines. It turned out it didn't kill me, it just sent me off on a mad one. Um, yeah, I was just on an amphetamine like a lunatic for about 18 months till I got locked up. Then on the jail, I got onto the heroin. And yeah, just started petty offending from like age 18 up until I got my me, me big sentence. But um, I was in and out every year for only like three months, six months, like I say, just robbing cars or shoplifting, you know, fighting with police, whatever you do as a kid. But it was nothing serious. I just um, didn't enough to get myself by. But um, on one prison sentence, I met a kid in jail. Um, when I got out, started selling drugs for him in a uh, Ancoats, Miles Plotting. Not miles away from where I live, but I don't know everybody down there. Um, for a drug addict, I was doing really well. I was at it for about three years, selling drugs in and around Manchester City Centre. Um, so one day, my dealer asked me if I would let a friend of his drive for me for a bit. He'd just got out of jail for doing uh, boxes, like security vans. Um, would I let him drive for me because I got on my feet? Uh, I said no at first, but obviously he's my dealer, what he says goes. So yeah, I started letting him drive us about. I already had a driver. He, he then brought his girlfriend on board and the profits just started going down. He was all using. So uh, they, uh, both my drivers, my, my original one and my second one, um, and always, every, all they'd ever done was burglaries. That was their thing. 
my new driver uh, said he knew Birds of Fear, but we were loads of money in it. So obviously needing money, I need to go along. And I just say we'd been on two before that, out the area. Obviously they say you don't shit on your doorstep, so we went out the area. I was just a knock on the door thing. It scared me, but it was for, for the very reason that happened on this one. But um, I just knock on the door, go back to the car, and they'd go in the house. And each time they come back, said they had, they, there was nothing in there. They had a odd bottle of spirits or something. And, uh, only for me to find out days later, they'd been down to another deal or scoring off him. So like when they've gone in on this one now, and they're saying there's loads of money in there, I'm thinking, well, I'm going in, I'm not I'm having my eyes out again. So I've gone, knocked on the door, even shouted through the door. Um, there's no answer. I've gone back, told them, we've all gone back to the door. We've kicked the door in, and it was uh, like well, two flights of stairs. One up, one down, flat, I think it's called. So we've got the top of the stairs, and like every room's on that little landing. And as we've gone in the room in front of us, it's a living room. To the left in the far corner was an old guy who sat there. Obviously, this is this is the reason I don't do burglaries. I, I'm just in a situation now. I don't re I really don't want to be in. Um, like I said, I was selling drugs, so I didn't have to be there. I had drugs in my pocket. And I'm instantly saying, right, come on, just leave. You could see there was nothing in the house anyway. Um, just leave, let's get out. I've got drugs. Um, my new driver's going, no, there's fucking money in here and all there's loads of money in here. Start screaming at the guy. My other driver's gone into the kitchen. I've gone into him and said, listen, we need to get out of here. This is ridiculous. So he said, yeah, come on and grab him. We've gone into the living room. And uh, so he's at the far end of the living room now. And before I can stop, it was one punch. He's punched the guy once. I would have had to be in Superman to stop it. I couldn't stop it. Um, I picked the guy up. He fell to his knee and I put him on the couch. He had a bloody nose. He had no other injuries on him whatsoever. Obviously, it wasn't nice. It was, a, it was an old man. He shouldn't have touched him, but he didn't really look that injured. So I've just left then. Well, I didn't leave him. I picked up the telly and said, just Come on, get the telling, let's go. I just wanted to get out. I was trying to just get them out there. Um, no fucking take till he's on burglaries. Well, I just dropped it and I left. Um, they come out about a minute later. Pathologists, both pathologists said in court it was there was no other violence after that. It was just a one punch. So yeah, we've left. We've gone back to his flat and obviously I'm fucking going nuts. What the fuck are you hitting him for? And he's an old man. And I just fucked off. Um, a few days later, I was coming back from town. And the police just jumped on me. You're arrested uh, for murder. Fucking murder? What fucking murder? What you're on about? Obviously, they arrested me. I dropped a tissue at the front door as we're kicking it. So I'm nicked straight away. Oh yeah, I'm locked up now. Charge with, um, well, I'm getting questioned for days. I think it's about five, six days in and out of magistrates, all hours a night for extensions. Anyway, they end up charging me. I've gone to strain graze on remand for three months and told it was on my own before anyone got locked up. And I had lads on the wing who, who know me, you know him, saying, like, Chrissy, what are you doing? That's not you. What's going on? I can cast a little twat up. I didn't. I should have done, but I didn't. When you're in that world, you don't do that. So yeah, I, three months later, he gets nicked on his fingerprints and just starts switching it on me straight away to the extent that he's saying I'm putting his prints in the house and all sorts of stupid. So yeah, we go. That's it. Yeah, I'm locked up for murder now uh, for an old man as well. That's not nice, you know. In jail, that's fucking not good. Thankfully, because I've been in out all my life, I know a lot of people in jail. And like I say, the people who know me, most of them anyway, I, I never got a crack for it once throughout my 13 and a half years. For that, I never got a crack once. I had one crack of fight, I think, over drugs. But I was looking, but it never stopped me for one day, fearing it was coming. 
on them charges. I see people making snide comments and so yeah, I was up. I wasn't fair. I wasn't fair. I, I'm right. It's all I've been doing for killing an old man. You want to be in fair, but that way I was looking. Paul D. Flynn, he's got a lot of brothers, a lot of drug dealers. It was all getting through about I was the grass. So he's got family, he's got friends. I was just getting pure threats and that in the jail. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to do. We went to court. Um, we've gone on trial. The other kid didn't get a nit, never had any evidence on him. But he died a few years later of heart attack, apparently. But to this day, like me, he never intended for one minute to hurt anyone. So I would never have put him in. He just, but we've gone on trial now. I'm thinking this will be all right. I've not hit anybody. It's one punch. Do you know, two of us couldn't throw one punch. We run the trial. He doesn't take the witness box. I get in the witness box. Like, say, he's putting it all on me. Comes out, he's got. Three cons for it, past similar offences, very similar offences, um, beating disabled man up in his own house. And, well, wasn't hard for the jury to find him, it found him guilty of the punch. But here's where it gets finger on the joint enterprise. I was as guilty, equally as guilty, not because I intended to do anything, which is paramount to any offence, well not every offence, there's little driving offences you don't need intent for, but almost every offence you need intention in your head, men's real. What's going on with the joint enterprise law is um, obviously our legal system world leading in it, <laughs> well it used to be, so it was in a, another country using our laws, misinterpreted the, the law and uh, in, intention and joint enterprise and replace intention with foresight, not even foresight, possible foresight, which basically means could I possibly foresee what, what happened or was going to happen? Which is, I just say it, it, this would do, it's possible there's life on Mars. You cannot disprove that. that. Mm. And yet the burden of proof is lowered in the joint enterprise, it shouldn't be touched. Under our rule of law, burdens of proof and all this intention should not be messed with. But the burden of proof is lowered for me as a secondary partner to just foresight. So, yeah, could I possibly foresee what was happening, what would happen? Obviously, I could possibly foresee that. I may never have intended it or wanted it to happen or dreamt it would happen, but I could possibly foresee. So, yeah, I was convicted with him for murder. He got a 25-year tariff. I got a 20-year tariff. And um, yeah, off I went to start my sentence. Um, went to Franklin first. I was still uh, obviously taking drugs. I had my head right up my ass, trying to get my head around it. And then about four or five years in, I've seen a, an advert in Inside Time for Jemba. Have you been done under joint enterprise? Did your judge die at the jury on four sides? Well, and I come under everything he was asking, so obviously I wrote a letter to him quick. So I've been with him from day one, Jengbo. Um, thank God, it was just two normal house rides. One son was locked up for it. He had 5% prison. He couldn't even see what was going on, but it doesn't matter. And the other lady, Gloria Morrison, it was a, a friend of her son's who she'd known all his life and she just knew he, he wasn't that kind of guy. Looks into it a bit, see what was going on. And yeah, the two of them started campaigning together. Thank God. And they campaigned for this part of 10 years. So they got to the Supreme Court. They actually they'd done select committees, justice committees. They've been talking here, there and everywhere. A bit like I'm trying to do now. But, um, Eventually got to the Supreme Court and, and yeah, it actually happened. We never dreamt it would, but you, the Supreme Court said, yeah, you, you're right. We have been misinterpreting a lot for 32 years. We've been locking people up for 32 years, for decades, life sentences. 
32 years they've been doing that. And it took two housewives to point it out. So anyway, yeah, they admit it, and we all think, yes, I could hear the doors in the jail, because we had it on the Parliament channel, and we was like, everyone thought, we're ever getting appeals. Um, not a chance. <laughs> I'll, you know, um, and they sit on them benches every day talking about responsibility and, and all this accountability and and yet when it's happened to them, they just cover it up quick. So what they've done, they've um, put a test in the way. We're not just going to give everyone retrospective appeals who's been locked up on it. You're going to have to prove to us that you have suffered substantial injustice. Um, not defined what it is. I would say blatantly a life sentence, a life license, the stigma, any number of things is substantial injustice, but they won't define it. Um, I've looked, obviously I've done, I've done a law degree while I was locked up. Um, the precedent for it, this substantial injustice test comes from uh, driving offences. You got some driving offences wrong, on, applied the law wrong in driving offences. So as a car thief, I know the maximum sentences you're getting for these kind of offences, 18 months, two years. So obviously to stop the floodgates, and probably rightly so, because there was, they've done that again for years, so there was thousands of cases. So to stop the floodgates, they put a substantial injustice test in the way. Which is really, even on that, was pretty hard to pass. Um, but now they've applied it to, to this scenario, and you're talking decades there. We've got kids on our books with 35 year tariffs. These are like 18 year old kids. We've got grandparents, the same thing, right across the board. And unlike me, we've got a lot who, who are totally innocent, who've never been in trouble. Obviously, I was at it. I deserve a sentence. But I deserve a sentence for what I did and what I intended. I'd definitely burglary. Yeah, I'd say robbery as well. But no way am I a murderer. I've not for one minute did I intend anyone to get hit. I had drugs in my pocket. I don't, I don't need to go that far for drugs. Um, so yeah, they put this test in the way now. Not defined it. There's been about 30, 40 appeals. I'm the only one to pass it. So therefore, we work it out of my case what this substantial injustice is. You're supposed to be able to go to the Supreme Court and ask questions on law, but they've put another little proviso in that stops us doing that. So we can't, they won't define it, so we have to guess what it is. Um, going off my case, it was spontaneous violence. There was no weapons. And it wasn't pre-planned. So, uh, so the way I'm working out, yeah, is I think if there's a gun involved, a lot of murders there is, you've not got a sniff. There's a knife, you've got a little, maybe a little bit more of a chance. If it was just a sting, longer tax, probably a bit more. That's the only way I, I, I can work it out, I don't know. And if it is like that, if there's a gun involved, it doesn't mean, just because depending on the weapon means you're any more guilty. You either knew it was happening or you didn't. So yeah, they put this test in the way, no one's passed it. I'm the only one who's passed it. God knows why. Um, I will just add, I don't know um, if this comes into it. You tell me what you think. I've done four years in Grendon Therapy Prison. You can have, you have social days where you can invite anyone you want up, um, MPs, solicitors, probation. I had some brainwave. I'm going to invite me judge up. Obviously doing life, I'm thinking, how am I getting out? Best ways to get out. My mind's working all the time. Um, but if I get me judge, and he comes and sees me now, today, instead of it's the little junkie in dock, and I go for parole and all that, you can say, but the difference is, but I'm just thinking what possibilities. Anyway, I wrote to Manchester Crown. They wrote back saying, the judge can't make it that day, but he'd love to come up. He's never been asked before. Um, it turned out my judge was Lord Leveson, the Leveson Inquirer. Yes. And his position at the time of my appeal, they come into jail, they come on the wing, 
Um, we had a QA and a he come in myself, seen all my law books doing me degree, he was well impressed. He come in at Fedigy Group I was on, again, well impressed. And we, and we stayed in touch, communicated, even after I got out, I was writing to him for a bit, proper signed, headed letters from him. He was headed the appeal court, and I'm the only one who's got out. Is that coincidence? I really don't think it is. I think if you put, you've obviously showed that you're a, a bright and intelligent man, and that you've put the work in, um, and you've shown this 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 judge, um, Levinson, that you've put the work in, uh, and that you're sorry for your part in what happened. I think that. It may have marked your ticket. Yeah. You, you know, you, you... But why, why am I the only person? And I'm not wholly innocent. There's people who've not got a criminal record in their lives. Who are just, and it's torture. It's torture. And that was just a little caveat. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I won the appeal. Um, Shipped me straight out of why what I was in at that time. I just got my cat C after 13 years. Um, they shipped me straight out of there back to Preston Nick. Well, the nearest remand Nick put me back on remand now for a retrial. Um, the retrial come about, and this is a big regret of mine that um, he offered me manslaughter, which meant time served. I'd be walking out the door that day. It's a bit of a big fish in it. Or do you do you run the retrial and, and trust these people again? <laughs> Obviously, I've got my kids saying, Come on, Dad. Um, I took the plea, I shouldn't have done, I really shouldn't have done. They had no evidence. Um, yeah, so so they give me a manslaughter charge and, and swap me 20 year tariff for an 18 determinate. For a one punch manslaughter that I didn't throw. No one gets 18 years for manslaughter. The only one who's got over that is Phil Pot who burnt all his kids. You don't get them sentences for manslaughter. And all it is is politics. So if anyone does get past the substantial injustice test, then they've got another bar to meet because they've got to prove that they're doing more than 18 years or less than eight. That makes sense. That the mm. sentence they've got. It's going to be substantially bigger than the one for mine. Uh, even when I put, they took me downstairs, like let him out. Judge says, let him out, it's time, sir. Been in camp court before. She took me downstairs. I'm in the holding cell now. Going home. Yeah. Quarter past 12, I'll come out of court. A couple of hours, met tops to fill your paperwork and that. At five, now there's nothing happening. I'm kicking the door going, what's happening? It's a plot the company going right, you're going back to um, Preston to get released. What? And again, that's just politics. There was Jember was outside, my kids was outside, film crew was outside. They just didn't want to see me coming down the stairs. Because it obviously highlights their for pups. 32 mm. years, you know. I don't understand how people aren't getting this in the head. They're locking people up. Like Julie was on last week, Mark, oh, just locking people up for decades with no evidence. It's just mind blowing to me. So yeah, that's it. I got out, and um, now yeah, a campaign for Jemba. I could have just walked away, but I've set, met a lot of these people in jail, and it's just not right. I just need to sort it out. And the fact that we're still fighting now after winning the Supreme Court case like that is just beyond incomprehensible for me. I just don't get it. Yeah, it's almost getting MPs on. Yeah, I must admit, I, I didn't know about it until I spoke until uh, Julie Major contacted me. Really, um, I had no idea what joint enterprise was. Um, you know, it, it's it comes across to me as barbaric and as barbaric as, say, the IPP. Um, you, you know, well, more, um, more, more about it, really, but, you know, hopefully that's, that's another thing. Out, hopefully like, they can get, yeah, hopefully they can get out in a couple of years, because that come out when I first got locked up for that charge, 2005, 
and started coming out the IPPs. People with six month tariffs and they're still in there today. So it's that about sixteen yeah, some... years, but but maybe they could get out in a couple of years. There's people on joint enterprise we've got thirty five year tariffs who are not getting out. So there's sixty odd eight so they're only eighteen something. Yeah, I don't know. It just needs sorting out. Um, it can't be an easy, mate. Like, that can't be an easy living with that sort of stigma. Um, you know, it wasn't I was nice, mate. I, 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 I won't lie. I, I, I went on numbers at one point. It was it the, the, just the fear of it every day, and just the stress. But it was the best movie ever made. Obviously, horrible on there. But I got myself clean and I started doing my degree. And then I went straight back on the main. It was just to get my head together. It was just, you know, mm. I'm big enough to say I have my fucking numbers and what. You know, it, it was the best thing for me to do at that time. But yeah, living with that kind of offence. The jail's not nice. It was like, it was literally torture. And then I'm, I'm thinking, what, what do my kids really think? Tell me they believe, man. My sister says she believe. Do they really, really think? Do they think I've actually done this? And nothing in the world stopped me getting off drugs. Nothing. Except that fucking sentence. I mean, justice of that sentence. The only thing that got me off drugs. I've relapsed a couple of times since I've been out. But for eight years, like you, I've just done seven now. Like eight years I was clean jail. Nothing that, nothing made me do that except it's injustice it is. It's just nuts how it's still. And um, it's supposed to have changed the law now. Joint enterprise, yeah. It's a good law. If it's used right, correctly, I think it's a good law. Like Stephen, it was using the Stephen Lawrence case. Yeah. If two people gone out to do the same thing, same plan, it's a good fucking law if you're using evidence. But when you start throwing foresight like you did, it's just ridiculous. It's just, literally, it's just basically no evidence. You don't need no evidence. Could you possibly foresee? I'll ask you now, could you possibly foresee a plane like just crashing behind your house or something? Possible, is it? Probably not going to happen, but it's not. You could possibly foresee it. No, no. I mean, that'll be your imagination, isn't it, really? I mean, being honest, right? I can, I can imagine that, you know, you, you, you've gone out and, and uh, you, you've, you, you've done this burglary. And, you know, maybe you could have. Foreseen that you, you know it's a 50 50 chance whether someone's going to be there, yeah. Yeah, well, I can force this is what I'm saying. I can, of course, I can foresee, and that's what that's what they're using. You can possibly foresee anything if you've got to do a burglary, you could possibly foresee the roof collapsing when you're in there. You just might look, or you could see any anything could happen, it's not beyond the realm of your, your foresight, yeah. Obviously, yeah. I can, I can foresee, I can foresee. Someone might be in. Obviously, we're not talking that. I even shouted through. I, I'm definitely 100% mm. sure there's no one in his house if you shouted through the letterbox. Mm. He had tinnitus in his ears, so he couldn't hear the door. Obviously, we, he didn't answer it. We thought there was no one in. It's just yeah. bad. It was just all, it's just all a nightmare. Well, and obviously, no, yeah, there's, a victim, and, and there's a victim at the end of the day. And we don't ever forget about the victims. I'm generally, you know, but it doesn't help nobody locking innocent people up, no. especially victims. Because then you're going to tell them years later, like mine, we well, didn't do it. Well, no one's a winner when innocent people are getting locked up. Use evidence, do the job like you're supposed to, and everything's good in it. But I don't know, mate. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. I mean, it's like you, you said you, 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 you took a play, um, you, you know, you, you, you took a uh, manslaughter. And when I was speaking to Julie uh, last, last week, uh, or was it the week before? Um, yeah, the week before, um, you know, she said that. You know, she's going through all these things that she would like to see, um, or that you know could possibly do, like um, Mark taking a plea. You know, he would take a plea because he he served so much time for something yeah. that he didn't commit. He would consider taking a plea. 
and 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 it's that 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 that's the weight that you know that's a weight of burden really. Um, do, do you take the play? Admit um, some sort of uh, you know something that you didn't do. But, but, just but so manslaughter, you manslaughter, is just, manslaughter is basically murder without in, any intent in it. So basically saying mm. it was an accident for me. It was something I, I didn't mean to happen. It's just happened, but I'm still guilty anyway because. I was part of the causation, as you call it, whatever. Um, but that should be right if you found evidence, like if I was, um, if there was more blows, if there was more injuries, or if there was evidence of me planning it or telling someone we've got to rob, rob this house. So if we sat down and planned the robbery, there would be ways of finding evidence if I'm involved. It's, um, yeah. I mean, thinking back to me cross examination in, in the dock, um, yeah, just like asking me a question, and, I, I'm, and I'm answering like, yeah, of course, like about the foresight, and that's what got me appeal was foresight used, and he kept using it. Could you possibly foresee? And I'm going, well, no, I did. I would never think you were going to hit an old man, I wouldn't hit an old man. Um, and what they use as well, because we're criminals, we, we brag about each other's offences. And they do a lot of that. Mm. You're not gonna brag, he's not gonna brag to me about beating a disabled guy up. What fucking chance is he gonna tell me that? But well, the, the, the court go along that I because I know him and he's done that other offence. I could foresee, definitely foresee him doing something similar. Which would be right if if I knew he'd done that offence. But um, like I say, you didn't even bother checking how long I've known him. Or... That's what I mean. You don't need to do anything. The police don't need to do anything. And yeah, they made a, they made a, a BBC drama on it, doc a documentary, Anatomy of a Crime. You know what the papers are like, mate. They dramatise everything. All sorts of shit was coming out. I, I was his rent, this guy's rent boy and fucking all sorts. We was in there injecting and sit down and smoking. It was just fucking pure nonsense. But um, yeah, so that was my arrest. I was filmed all the way through to conviction. And when I got out, I've done a, a radio interview the next day, which generally planned. But off the back of that, the, the, the direct producer, whatever, he'd done that documentary. Went in touch with Jen and said, It's all right, is there any chance I can get to meet John? I need to start to say something to him. Obviously, my ears are picking up on what's all this about. I've met him and he's gone, I've done eight programs, John, and out, out of all of them, Jaws was I wasn't happy with. It was a sit uneasy with me. I said, What do you mean? He said, Well, he was filming everywhere the inspector's office, the lead detective, and he said he was sat in the Side of well. the inspector's office with the lead detective, and he, he literally come to blows. Literally got physical, arguing about charging me. Like the inspector was saying, he can't. And oh, and my victim's son was a police officer in my area as well. So it was all. It was all out for me, wasn't there? So yeah, they're, they're fighting in the chat in in the office about charging me. So obviously the inspector didn't think it was right. But and I'm saying, well, why didn't you fucking tell say this at my trial or something? But telling me this far now, uh, yeah. just all stinks. And yeah, there's people locked up on even lesser things than me. Phone calls. Um, You've not even been at the scene. The extent of it, if you, if you, one case we've got is um, a mum and dad have took their son and his son's girlfriend out for a meal. On the way home, they've come across a few kids, gang of kids. Kids started getting led with them, and tried to hit the son. So obviously the father's got in the way. Um, 
the fathers end up hitting one of the kids, I think. Kids dies up. The mum, the dad, the son, and the daughter all lived off. Another one, people at home in the house, drug dealers come chopping the door with machetes and baseball bats. He's gonna have to defend his home. He's, the father's locked up, the grandfather's locked up, and the 15 year old son's locked up. We've got hundreds of them, it's just ridiculous. Um, girlfriends have been asleep upstairs in bed. And the fellas have gone off downstairs. It's fucking nuts. We've got girls who have been victims and then turned into perpetrators. It's just horrendous. It really is. It's, you know, I, I, my mind just boggles why I'm still here talking about it and nothing's getting done. I'm glad you are, mate, to be honest. You know, it's people like you that we need to come out and educate you, you know um i'll be open and honest i i when, when i was you, you know when, when we started talking and I, I i looked into you and you know you type your name into google and and what comes up is murderer 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 and you know i know yeah. that we had a you, you know I, I, i'll be honest and say we had a, a bit of a misunderstanding oh, yeah, yeah. because of the way that i read it um yeah, yeah. Because they don't explain that. Yeah, yeah I'm telling you, because when you, you said that, I've said to you, I'm not a murderer, mate. Mm -hmm. Please don't be doing this. This is what the papers are doing, and I have this yeah. with them every time. I got done with manslaughter in the end, but they all just... Even after we talked, after the bridge and all that, and we was reporting all that, he got told, the papers got told, and said, right, we, we know now. He's still prepping it again the day after. He tells papers. Mm. It does. That's the thing about me. I'm, I'm, I'm media. And that's the crux of the problem with this country. The media run our judicial system and they run the politicians. Yep. The media runs everything. They do. And everyone they believes do. what they're told. They, they, they do. You, you know, I mean, I think most people these days are kind of switched on to um, the, 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 the bullshit that, that comes, that gets filtered through the mainstream media. You know, and you've got the obvious bullshit in, in the, um, you know, the rags like the sun and, um, you know, all sorts of papers. And then it, it filters up to the broadsheets, you know, and it's a different kind of bullshit. But at the end of the day, it's, you, you, you know, not, not just a lie. It's, it's blatant um, sort of misrepresentation of people. Um you know, and after just looking for 10, 15 minutes at your name and then knowing a little bit about your story that you were misrepresented. You know, um, I, I spoke to a guy, um, Terry Anton, uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, and he was slaughtered by uh, the sun uh, in the 80s and 90s um, because of lies that were that, that were told. Um you know, it, it's difficult to sort of filter out the the what's true and what isn't because they will mix truth in with lies, blatant lies. Definitely, yeah. Um, tell tell me a bit about Fishmonger Hall and how you came to be there. And um, when I was in the um, Grendon therapy. Um, Halfway through my, my degree, and um, Cambridge University coming with some new initiative. We wanted to trial. Um, so the governor let them in. It was they brought ten of their students in, criminology students, and we got ten prisoners, and we'd all go in a big in the in the meeting room on the wing, and do a module like uh, over eight ten weeks. We'd meet every week, have a different lecturer in. We get into little groups, five groups of six or seven of us. We discuss things between us, then we feed it back as a group. And we'd done like uh, an exam at the end of it, pass the module. I'm getting equal scores with some of the Cambridge lot, not all of them, but I'm on a par with some of them. 
and we just sat and we 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 taught some. It was just like it didn't it wasn't like they see us. It was just like I don't know. It was just they just proper talked to us like normal people. Told us things about their lives. We told us things about our lives. And uh, for me, just and uh, well, I know a lot of people on there just shattered all the um, stereotypes. Like we, I'd have from a council estate about all these posh middle class snobs as I used to think of them, but they're not they're just normal people who have had tragedies in their own lives and that. Um, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, that's what. Um, so yeah, they started in Cambridge in Grendon. And then it started going to other prisons up and down the country. You had like Leeds University doing Full Sutton, Durham University doing Franklin. Like your local university would go into your local jail and it was spread all over the country. Um, unfortunately, they took it into Whitemore, the Cat A prison, long term prison. Um, there, yeah, obviously, Osman Khan, probably a, a couple of Cat eight prisoners have got on it. Um, he's been coming up for release, hasn't he? He went on a parole license. Um, yes. I just want to say this right from the start, like it, learning together, it was called, it was a an education initiative, nothing else. It wasn't for rehabilitation, it was just education. It turned out to do a lot more rehabilitating than any of the courses I've ever done in prison. Far more. But um, their educators are not secure. Any, all the who goes on in this course and who's allowed to and not is down to security. Like everything that works in a prison is security. So security in White Marshall said he's not caught, he can't come on there. But anyway, he got on there. I said, I don't know him, I've never met him. Uh, I'm, I got out now, I'm out. Been to a couple of universities, prisons overnight. With, Cambridge doing, seeing how it's going. And this was like a five year celebration. So it was people from jails, universities all over the country. We had judges, MPs, all sorts of dignitaries in there. It's a big like five year celebration of what's been going on, but it's been going. And there, yeah, Osmond Khan was invited. Um, I originally was supposed to meet um, another prisoner who was in Grendon with us. We were supposed to meet him. The lad who tragically died, Jack. And Simon, another learning together employee. Gareth got there late, he was a prisoner, so Jack said out oh, he'll wait for him. Me and Simon was to get that start going down there. When we got on a train from Cambridge, he said to me, Oh, we've got to pick a lad up at underground station, he doesn't know his way there. Okay, sweet. But um, on the way down there, I, I'm preparing to go up to Manchester straight from London to see my kids. So I've got bags packed. Um, I spilled my coffee all over my clothes. The bags are snapped. The turntiles aren't working for me. I'm just in a bad mood. It doesn't take a lot, really. But, but yeah, we get there. Because um, I'm in the mood with all these turntiles, he says, Simon says to me, Wait here, I'll go and get him and I'll come back. Got to come back this way anyway. So he went about 10 minutes to come back with him. Um, said, so John, this is Usman. Usman, this is John. I just looked at him and like went to shake his hand, but he just walked straight past me. He didn't swap, you know what I mean? Um, well, nothing more of it. I just followed him. I was just like trailing behind him at the back in a bad mood, like I say. <laughs> So we got to the event, um, we had to buzz in, get let in, and uh, I got to sit behind the reception tables where they was learning together with staff, trying to sort my bags out. I don't know where he went, I wasn't watching him. Um, after that, I just went out for a smoke. I was out on the bridge having a smoke and thought, fucking hell, this is where that attack happened. You know, gone back in, had a brew, I think, then it was, a break time, going for some lunch or something. It might have been a bit earlier than lunch. Um, but there was just all fancy stuff that 
posh stuff I thought I don't like that. It was just nothing I liked. So that pissed me off as well. <laughs> so I thought so I went out for a walk, so I go and get a sandwich or something. I was just walking around London for a bit. I went back in again, then come out again for another walk. About three times, and then the last time I went in, it was just after dinner. Like say they have they have like a lecture, then they'll split off into groups, discuss it, and then they'll feed it back. So they've all just gone off and split off to see what they're doing. And I'm sat in a big banquet hall now waiting for them to come back. And um, one bloke come back first on his own, turned out to be John Samuels, an ex judge, happens to be a mentor I got from Cambridge, but I'd never met him. I wanted to talk to him, so I, he come in and worked out how it was. I said, oh, can I have a chat with you about something? He said, yeah, just come out onto the balcony. So as we're going out onto the balcony, Gareth, who, who got there later, turned up, and he wanted to speak to him as well. So I said, yeah, Gareth, here's John. And we just went out onto the veranda on the balcony. And we was talking for about 30 seconds. I just started going, screams, just started hearing screams. So I just started looking at each other at first and what's that someone messing about? And then obviously it got a lot more like I say guttural, it was like proper what was obviously going on. So we've gone down, it's a big massive staircase, big old posh building in it. So it's like two ways down to the centre bit. So the landing and it goes down to another bottom, like the last flight of stairs. So we've got down to the, the middle bit and you can see Saskia straight away, the throat up. Leading juicily. Um, but as we've got like right next to her, and uh, right at the bottom of the steps, bounce him out with his two knives. Gareth dropped to his knees to Saskia, and then I've just gone uh, forward to him. And what, like, what was he doing? I don't know what I was trying to say. I'm just like, like, calling him a fucking idiot, sort of thing, really. Um, then straight away, there's been a woman who works for Learning Together, like walking straight toward him in a trance. And I can see behind him as well. I didn't know who it was at the time, but there's a girl curled up in a ball. And you can see a blood going down from the side of her. Um, don't know who that is at the time. It turned out to be another Learning Together lady, this other woman's mate. I think she was just in a trance trying to get to her. She was just like walking straight to him. Obviously, I've got to get her out of the way straight away. And then he comes from there, and I, obviously I, he's got knives, I can't fight with him, so i oh, just fight. So I'm just like backing off from him and then running at him again. And he'd back off and end up, there's only a left turn there, there's nothing else there, big heavy left turn, so I picked up and threw it at him. Bounced off him, trapped into a couple of pieces. So he's come for me again then. It was just like that, to and fro for a couple of minutes. Um, He's trying to get up the stairs to get all the dignities and that upstairs, but after a bit, he, he obviously sees he's not getting past. And he just turns around then, suddenly turns back on himself and starts running back behind him, back to the girl on the floor. But I, obviously, I've gone after him. Before I can get to him, his big fucking eyes, I've seen him stick it in it twice, like all the way in. Hopefully, I, I end up, there's a big ornamental chair, that's all that was there again, so I picked that up. Hopefully, that stopped him from a third one, but well, did. He's gone flying again, the chair's bounced off him. And the lad turned up with the Narway or Trust then, and, and another kid, Steve. Um, so that's given me a, a, a second then. I can, I, first time I've been on my own, so I jibbed off for some fine, fine son of else. There's nothing there, I don't know where they got the tusk from. But um, it's just pictures, and then I'm right at the bottom of the corridor was the fire extinguisher. So I thought pictures throw that at him. And when I've picked up, I thought, obviously, I've seen the belt now as well, and I've tried to But he said, I don't know, what are you doing with that? And well, it's fronting in it, just trying to front. I don't know, in these circumstances, I don't think it works the same, but it's all you know, in it, so I'm just trying to. Call his bluff, like, what the fuck's that? Blow it then, open beyond all hope that it's just a little shit bag you haven't got the bottle. Now I'm waiting for the police. Anyway, yeah, I've got off again. That like, so then I've got off, like I said, found it extinguisher. What the fuck? And then I thought, no, I, I soak his wires and that. 
not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking all sorts of not spraying with it, and it just blinds him. He can't see. It like obviously really really affected him because he started going through the door. Then he just couldn't. When I'm spraying, him, he, can't, he can't see what's going on, so he, he, he wants out of there. And obviously, everyone's seen it when we went out on the bridge. Just caught him looking. I sprayed him, Darren hit him, and Steve just one hand him. And then we all jumped on him instantly on his hands. I think I hit him in the head with the fire extinguisher. He's just killed two people, or he's just really hurt, gone nuts. So I bit him with the fire extinguisher on the way down. And then obviously, we both straight on his hands. He's going for the belt, whatever. Put the knife out of his hand. I turned the hand around, started hitting the temple with the handle. And I can remember someone put a bit of tussle saying, Don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him. Anyway, so, and then the next thing, the police are there. Right, get off him. He's got a fucking belt. Get off him. And then that was it then. Obviously, he shot him eventually. Me that I was screaming, just shoot the bastard. Yeah. Didn't just shoot him straight away, he took a second or two. Hit him with the taser, aren't they? Hit him with the taser, don't move. <laughs> Obviously, he's moving in there. <laughs> so he just shot him twice, didn't he? Then we got off into the building, cleared the building, and yeah, evacuated us all. It was only later on that we found out uh, Jack was, was dead as well. See, Jack died. Jack died in the attack in the toilets. I made it to the security office so we couldn't see him where everyone else, Saskia was on the stairs, Izzy was on the landing. So I didn't know nothing about Jack until later on. Yeah, turned out he got Jack as well. So yeah, that was all. That's, 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 that's rough, man, you, you, you know. And it turned out, it, you know, it wasn't a real belt, is that right? Well, yeah, yeah. It probably gone to town right away. We've got little wires coming out of it and everything. It was, yeah. Idiot. Proper four lines thing, innit? Yeah, I, I, I can't even begin to imagine what was going through your head um and uh you know i can't even begin to imagine the what the families are are going through and you know to lose someone in, a, in an attack like that it's just it's senseless mate i'm too amazed to seriously two amazing people such special people like Jack drove up, drove up from Cambridge to Manchester just for my graduation on his own. Yeah, that was just special, man. That's, that's... When I met him, Jack, on the course originally, he, he was studying law. Obviously, I was doing my law degree, so I wanted any help I could get. But he was he was focused on corporate law. He was telling me I was going for the money, John. And at the end of the course, he totally done a 360, whatever you call it, and started working with Learning Together. He made his own law course, which he was running in Warren Hill. Um, yeah, he got, probably got involved in it, committed himself to it, gave his fucking life for it. And Saskia, trying to help people. Yeah, and then all after, from all that, Seem to be putting it on learning together. Um, the educators. He's bike more the prison he was in, bike more security governor was in Fishmongers Hall. The security governor of the Cat A jail that he was in. They should be making the decisions. But now to put it on and he's a good P Cambridge, like the two women who started to learning together, they're amazing people as well, just trying to do the right thing. And now they've been blamed for all this madness. They ain't got no security. They, they should have been told, nah, he's a terrorist. He can't be going. 
you know, and especially when they go back, you guys send it to an event on London Bridge. Come on, man. <laughs> How backward have you got to be? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I the failing has come out in that there. inquest. Uh, yeah, the failings <laughs> have come out in that inquest beyond ridiculous. I can believe you've got my fucking license restrictions done. You recalled me for nine months. The license condition, breaching one that wasn't even on my license. And all the kids who can't move, can't go and see any of the family because of all the restriction zones. But when he's telling us, I think they've all just thought, oh, is that important? Someone else will be looking at him, you know, and just drop the ball and come into it, mate. Ridiculous. Whole system is Yeah, I don't understand it. It is. It is. I, I'm really struggling to find the words, you know, because it all seems farcical. It all seems like it could have been fucking avoided. And, you know, it's just... Well, yeah, I only found out a couple of months ago that um, a month before, or a month after month at all, one of his co-defendants, um, they was going to blow up the stock exchange and that, wasn't they? That's what he was locked up for. One of his co-defendants was out as well. For five months. They never told any of us. Um, when they've arrested him, he'd been going into a university to see his girlfriend 20 odd times. Like I tell you, I know people and restrictions can't go anywhere. And he's supposed to be getting watched. He's gone into the, see his girlfriend 21 times in this university. When they've busted him, he's got a, a notebook, 50 contacts. 10 of them convicted terrorists or terrorists who are out. And he's running about six months as well. After that as well. He's fucking ridiculous, man. It's blowing. It's mind-blowing. I mean... That, that, originally, they both had parole. They all had parole sentences for doing the stock exchange. But some other judge on appeal has decided to... To give them a determinant, so they don't have to go for parole. And the all come out in the inquest, all the evidence he had that he was planning attacks when he got out. He was blagging his probation off. He was blagging every. It's fucking. It just goes on and on. I really can't tell you it goes on. The counterterrorism police where he lived felt um, overwhelmed. The mapper teams, the MI5 and all that, weren't sharing nothing with anyone. It's just ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. I mean, how yeah. how do you even? You know, I've I've seen some pretty horrific things in my life, but how do you even? You know. But you know what, mate? You tell me what, they, what they've said to me is, um, well, you used to put things like that because of what you see in prison. You don't see shit like that in prison, mate. <laughs> nah. Fucking idiots, man. That's what we're dealing with. MPs who haven't got a clue what they're doing and just do everything for votes. Follow the media's narrative to let off. Yeah, mate, that's just going to be that. Yeah, no. I, you know, just. I don't even know what to say, mate, to be honest. It's just how how do you even sort of. I don't even digest what, what, you know, what you've just told me. You went through it, but I can't even digest what you're telling me because it's all messed up. Um, you know, and it's just, it's senseless to me. It's absolutely yeah, senseless to me. Yeah, I can't make sense. I was talking about Levin, but it makes sense of it. I like to come to terms with it. It's just, uh, yeah, all the shit you imagine, flashbacks, nightmares. I just start whinging for nothing. Um, yeah. Getting a bit better slowly, but thankfully, I have a good relationship with his mum and dad, Jack's mum and dad. Um, 
They're amazing people. Obviously, Jack's dad came out the day after when he was going on about stuff on sentence to get tough. Not in my fucking son's name, you know. You know. Yeah, amazing people. There's some amazing people out there, man. They're just not in the offices they should be in. Mm. Yeah, and, and some there's some amazing people out there that want a voice but don't necessarily know how to get it across. Um, and it's you know, and there are people out there that don't have a voice, like the people that were tragically taken on, on that day. Uh, and you standing up, um, you know what what you did was was heroic, um, and to come on here. Um, live and, and and talk about your life and talk about the whole event of what you went through and and, and, and to bring that back up and you said this is your th was it the third one today um you, you know and and, and the um things that you, you know you're getting your voice across and you're giving a voice to these people that don't have one uh, and that is truly commendable um, no, it is, mate. No, I, I, don't is. Like, I don't like blowing my own trumpet, but uh, in this case, I want, it's just to like, prove a point because everyone just assumes everyone in prison are just nasty, horrible people. Um, and I did to an extent. I was brought up well, my mother brought me up well. Uh, when she died and that, I lost a lot. I was just like, I was a spoiled little brat. But I'm not a bad person. I've got more morals than I think half this country. But, um, I've never run away when friends have got in fights or probably stupidly sometimes, but you know, I've got moral morals and principles, but people just see prisoners as scum. And the therapy prison I was in, I felt I had some bad shit in my life, but the, the stuff I've heard people go through in there is just horrendous. That's traumatized me to an extent. A lot of them people in prison have been through some shit. People need to start opening their eyes and, you know. Yeah. He's enough a bit on the punitive side of things, man. He just longer sentences. I know a couple of people that have gone through Grendon. Um, you know, people like um, Terry Ellis and uh, Ray Bishop, who's one of the sponsors of, of this, um, this podcast. And, you know, um, Kevin Lane, um, who I'm hoping to get on pretty soon, who spent 13 years in prison for a murder he did. I was next door but one to Kevin Lane in Franklin. Good yeah. luck, Kevin. That's what everybody said. That's what everybody yeah, said. Good to see him out, man. Nah, he's a decent guy. I just remember him in his uh, e-book magazine, in his penny all the time, running out of the kitchen, cooking. No telly in the cell. He was just doing his case. He's just, yeah, he's a good kid, Kev. Yeah. I don't even know who I am, but I was just a little junkie on the end cell, I think, at that time. Well, I hope to get him on. Um, we spoke about it. Um, I think it's just finding time to, you know, obviously, you know, he's, he's, he's got a lot on. He does a lot of uh, podcasts. Um, I've seen him on a podcast. That made me laugh a few things he was saying, like, right? State to the point, but you know, no bullshit. Again, guy with morals and principles. Yeah. Brilliant. People mate. need to start seeing people in jail for what they are. They're not all monsters. There's a few in there. And they should be locked up. But yeah. I mean the vast majority of them are just lost. I was lost for years, lost. I'm still a bit lost now, but they just dehumanise you, you know, to nothing. And then let you out and expect you to... You know, just be no, perfect. perfect. After they've made you feel like there's nothing. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the reasons I, I do this. You, you know, I'm all about... Um, I believe that the prison system that we've got in this country is broken um and uh, yeah, i think it's truly broken 
Um, I think it needs reform, but at the minute it's about funding, it's about um, heads in rooms, it's about boxes to be ticked. Um, and while it's like that, this going to still be broken. Part of, my, part of my law degree, I, I was allowed to pick a module that I wanted to do myself, and I, I chose an effective practice in youth justice, basically a probation module, and um, the Oasis thing they use, academics, professionals, they all agree the Oasis doesn't work. They still use it, and they're all like telling each other it don't work, you know. And it doesn't work. What, what shames is put this country should be shamed of this justice system. A risk factor is being black. That is a risk factor if you're black. That is fucking shameful, mate. Yeah. I agree. That's our justice system, mate. It's 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 harsh. Um and that's something that you know I'm passionate about. I'm gonna be getting um a uh, you know, I'm going to be doing one of these. I'm going to be getting a group of people, hopefully like um, Terry and um, uh, Ray, and you know, uh, uh, Joey, um, and people like that, and and get them involved. Maybe yourself and have a real conversation about what's wrong with the prison system today. What's you know, how we think that it can be changed. You just basically hold it to rights. Um, and hold it accountable for um, what it is because it, it's, you know, it's responsible for breaking a few good men. One day in our prison system too long, it's just it's not right for anybody. You know, like Norway, look at Norway. Results don't lie, mate. You might see it as soft, but you did change people. Mm -hmm. Oh, people stop offending quick. Yeah. You see it, they're showing a different way to live. It's not rocket science, mate. Yeah, because it's about why why could I got my fucking why couldn't I got my degree in school when I was in school? I think expo expulsion should be illegal. You shouldn't be allowed to kick a kid out of school, the kids. Yeah, yeah. I got a law degree at 47 or something. I should have had that when I was 21, I swear. I had a whole different life. Football and you're making the good. best of what you've got now. Um, and that is yeah, just... I have to, mate. I have to. Like I say, I mean, mother brought me up well. Young boy. Young boy's done amazing things. I can't just turn me back on him. And, yeah. and Jack and Seth, you lost life. I have to keep talking about it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, just, I, I want to continue. I, I want to continue. I actually want to get you, and I want to get Julie Major, and I want to get um, Jay from Jengba, and I want to get a few other people. And I really want to um, help educate people in not just joint enterprise, but the whole thing of actually there are a lot of innocent people in prison. You know. Uh, you and I both know that pretty much everyone who's in prison will say that they're innocent in some way. Um, but, you know, the, the, there are some genuine... Even, even, even the guilty people in there, the, the way they're being set is just... It doesn't help nobody. It's just going to make people come out and what fuck you up, what beat you up and what rob you and rob your house and take your car and not give a shit. That's what they make you feel like. They just well, dehumanise them to nothing. Yeah, they do. You have no hope. Yeah, I mean, you know, what do you need to get out of postcode? You know, so you spend all that time being punished, right? Going to prison is the punishment. Losing your freedom is the punishment, punishment. right? Yeah. And what people say, you know, people think, you know, normal people out there think that, you know, you should continue to be punished, that prisoners, you know, get an easy time. They don't. You know, they don't. I mean, you know, it, it was the, 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 the 90s uh, for me, and it was just, you, you know, it's bad about oh, it. Man, right. people, people have had COVID, haven't they, now? So they should have a little more empathy now. 
like being away from the family and the kids, it's just but they horrendous. But, but they don't because they think more of an understanding now. All, all, all the sea, all, all the, you know, the, 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 the media puts their spin on it and they say, well, these prisoners are getting this and they're getting this and they're getting this and they're getting this and people are going, oh, really? I don't even get that. I pay my taxes. I do this. And, you know, it's riling them up. Mm. But what they don't realise is going to prison and losing your freedom, losing your liberty is the punishment. You shouldn't continue to be, even though you are, you shouldn't continue to be punished in prison now the problem is that there are people that get in there there are some people that go and they just want to get big and buff so they just work out all the time there are people that want to use the mind but you know and want to do degrees and that's fantastic and they get an education but there's only so many places but then you've got people like i was that couldn't even read or write their own name so wanted to learn yeah. and i could i couldn't get on education to start with so it, it was down to other people to help me um and it's just you know it's heads it's money it's mouths to feed it's boxes to tick you, you need a postcode to get out so you, you you know you've gone through that you know you've gone through what you've gone through you've done what you've done then you've gone into prison and you've gone round the system they bounce you from prison into prison they you know make you feel like an How animal people turn to drugs in prison i know exactly lots of men like i know exactly. lots of lads and then like adults coming grown men who live not a lot of them's life but locked up for some stupid car coke and the baggage mm -hmm. get out the drug drug addicts now their lives are fucked some stupid yeah. driving offense you know and that's because of the, the way prison he shouldn't turn into a fucking fuckhead. But there's, there's no help, is there? There's no help because it's, you know, it's it's a law onto its own, and and, and you know what some prisoners are like, um, you know, and the, the bullying and yeah, it's, it's, I suppose it's spice now, isn't it? But um, you know, and and definitely is. Yeah. It just you, you get stuck into that. I seen you know what I, you know what I seen them smoking. I've never seen them in my life. IBS tablets, what they call IBS tablets, big name for IBS tablets. Um, Any policy? Anyway, IBS tablets. They're running that on foil now, and they're just, I don't know what it's been to them, but they're fucked up on it. I don't know if we've worked that one out, but. Yeah. Well, where, where, you know, where, Smoking that, eating, like eating phones, eating everything in the cell, proper mentally gone. Stop. You can, nothing you can hide or pretend. Guys are fucking eating, putting shit on the butties and that, and eat, you know, the heads are fucking gone. But what do the screws do? They go to one of the key, lads, they don't do it themselves. Go and shut that cunt up. Yeah. And they tell other cunts to go and kick shit out of them, and they're mentally fucked. They don't give a shit. No. I was on the cleaners on when I got recalled. And the screws actually started coming to us. Like I used to wear them in air shop. Then they used to start coming to us, telling us who they'd done in, who the planets are doing. And I'll go, I used to just fucking think it. And I'm like there going, nodding, like going, fuck, oh, what? And they think I, I'm, I'm, I think it's good. And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? They will look for vulnerability, mate. You know, Screws and you so know, that's the whole thing. Right. can't be asked for people who are, are maybe a little bit of a problem going back to school. A bit of an unruly kid can't be asked, expelling in jail, a bit of a mental health. Oh, I can't be asked, listen to him, go and kick shit out of him, man. Mm. Can't be asked. Can't terrorism police keeping an eye on can you know, fuck it, you'll be all right. Yeah. Mm. Else probably watching. Lazy. John Enterprise is the most laziest law in the world. Just police don't have to do nothing. Can you possibly foresee? And it's supposed to be changed. Forget all the retrospective appeals, but you can't forget them. They need to be out, man. But possibly change the law now on the lesson. You have to just change the words. Mm. Just change the words. It's conditional intent now. Yes, you know. It's madness, mate.
it's absolutely mental. It's absolutely mental. Um, and it's, you know, I, th I think it's something that deserves a sort of a, a, a fuller look. So, like I said, I'd like to get you and, and, and Julie Major and, and, and Jay from Jane yeah. and a couple of other people together and we'll sit down and we'll do this and we'll have a, a real talk about um, Jenga law and, and the system and how it's treating people, how it treats you, um, how it's treating people like Mark, um, you know, um, was it Luke? Is it Luke Mitchell? Luke Mitchell? Is it Luke Mitchell? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, wonders of Alex Henry, um, Kid of Age Autism. You had the um, Sasha Baron Cohen brother is the lead in the world on autism. Is the lead fella in the world in Cambridge Uni. The Baron Cohen's brother. He was in the court scene to tell him the judge, the judge. He was involved in a 50 summit second fight. He threw his phone or something. He's got ADHD. They react to things like that. Yeah. And he's got slash, he's got the lead in the world. Saying this kid could not have been like intent mentally intending or he said to him, he said to, to the lead in the world, well, this kid's mum is a psychologist. She's trained him how to act autistic. That's what the judge has said to the lead in the world, yeah. So so then Cohen's gone, well, someone put this to me after I first tested him. So I went back and I tested him again. And this kid is autistic. No, she's black, bitch, she's black. <laughs> it's just ridiculous how they're kicking these cases out of court. How the fuck I got through, I will never know, mate. I haven't got a fucking clue. How the fuck did I get through? I was in a burglary, mate. And the, the, the height to get over this bar shows up. So anyone doubting me on where I'm from, to get past that bar, mate, I had to prove I was fucking innocent. That I never, you know. Oh, I'm getting frustrated right now. Time for my better thing, mate. Yes, mate. Can Thank you, you so much for coming on. Um, well, you've been for having fantastic. Us, we'll do it Let again. Let me know about anything in the future. I will do, mate. I will do. Um, I'm just going to say uh, goodbye uh, to people on here. Um, if you stick on for a minute, we'll have a quick chat um, yeah. before you go. Um, thanks, guys, um, as ever, for tuning in. Um, I see that people have left comments. I will go through them in a little while. Um, get sharing. Get this out. Let's see if we can hit. Um, I think it's 2.9K we hit on Julie Majors. Let's see if we can hit that in the same amount of time with this. It really is an important subject um, and it's something that needs to be looked at. Um, thank you, everybody, for getting involved. Thank you, everybody who's going to watch um, and who yeah, has I'm out now. I don't need to be here. I'm out. I don't need to be here. The, the injustice on this has got me here. And you need to start helping people, please. No. Thank you. Thanks, guys. I, I, shall, um, I shall see you next time. Cheers.